This is the Content Marketing Podcast, episode number 26, Content Marketing To-Dos for Your Summer Slowdown. Hello and welcome to the Content Marketing Podcast. This is the show where we help you attract and retain business through the power of quality content. I'm your host, Rachel Parker of Resonance Content Marketing, and today is July 4th, 2013. Hello, hello, and thank you for joining us today for episode 26 of the Content Marketing Podcast. Just a reminder, we are live on iTunes, so if you're listening to this episode on the blog, you can click on over and subscribe. That means you'll get new episodes automatically delivered to your smartphone or your iPod or your computer or your listening device of choice. And if you have an Android or other device that does not have access to iTunes, we also have an RSS feed, and I'll provide that link to you in the blog post. Now, if all goes as planned, this episode will be airing on the 4th of July, so I want to wish a very happy Independence Day to my fellow American friends, wherever you may be, and also happy 237th birthday to the United States of America. Many happy returns. Um, Speaking of milestones, this is episode number 26 of the Content Marketing Podcast, which means that we are six months old today. That's pretty exciting. Um, Thank you to everyone who has been with us from the beginning and everyone who has joined us more recently. Uh, It's a tremendous joy to bring this to you every week and I hope to see you back every week for many years to come. So last week, our conversation was all about numbers, specifically those numbers that can just make us content marketers absolutely crazy. I'm talking about the size of your email list, the number of Facebook fans you have, the number of downloads your ebook wrapped up, racked up, and so on and so forth. And we talked a little bit about how easy it is to get really, really obsessive over these numbers. And then I shared some thoughts on how to keep them in perspective and Believe me, I need that in my advice as much as anyone. So if you happen to miss that episode, feel free to click on over to iTunes or to our RSS feed and get all caught up. So that brings me to today's topic. Today we're going to talk about what to put on your to-do list during a slow time for your business, which for some of us might be right now in the smack in the middle of summer. First, I want to give you a quick update on Project Beagle Promotion. Uh, Just to give you some background, our little beagle, Hermione, who just turned six months old, along with the Content Marketing Podcast, she has been our intern here at Resonance since we brought her home as a little tiny baby puppy back in January. Now, Hermione has been working very hard on her housebreaking, uh, actually went through an entire week without any accidents, and so she is going to be due for a promotion very soon from her current status as intern. Now, here's the question. What should Hermione the Beagle's new title be Um, after this promotion? Of course, her big sister Sophie is our VP of morale, and that's an apt title since she was with me when I started this company back in 2010 and has served me well ever since. So uh, where should we put Hermione title-wise? Should she be in the same department, a subordinate to her big sister Sophie, or should she have her own domain within the organization? There are lots of questions to cover here. So, And I've gotten a few suggestions from listeners on what Hermione's new title should be, but I would love to hear more. So if you have an idea on what title you would give to Hermione, leave me a comment on the blog, or I've actually set up a landing page where you can make your suggestion. And I've set up a uh, short URL so you can get to it more easily. And I'll give that to you right now. It's bit.ly, so it's B-I-T dot L-Y slash promote Hermione. And that is all one word, all lowercase. And that's promote, P-R-O-M-O-T-E. And Hermione, which <laughs> the spelling trips up a lot of people, it's, is H-E-R-M-I-O-N-E. So the URL again is B-I-T dot L-Y slash P-R-O-M-O-T-E. H-E-R-M-I-O-N-E. And I will also give that link in the blog post and in the show description. So I invite you to click on over and you'll see some really cute pictures of Hermione the Beagle and be able to chime in your ideas on what her new title should be after she passes her internship status. 
Okay, now on to business. Uh, it is, of course, summertime. At least it is here in the northern hemisphere. I know our friends down under are having their winter right now. And um, I got to say, here in Texas, by the time the official first day of summer rolls around, we have been broiling in heat for about six weeks. So <laughs> it's almost a joke around here. It's like, oh, I guess it's official now. Um, we can start cooking until until early September. But um and for a lot of businesses, summertime tends to be a slower time. Not a lot of business gets done. Uh, a lot of people take vacations. Uh, the kids are out of school, so some people work a lighter schedule. Um, there's just not a, not a whole lot going on. I know a lot of associations take a summer break. Um, so for most businesses, and I won't say for most businesses, for a lot of businesses, uh, this is kind of a slow time. Now, if you happen to be in, say, the travel or hospitality business, or if you, say, uh, manage a water park here in Texas, this is definitely not a slow time for you. In fact, it's probably your busiest season. Um, but for, for those businesses that do have a, a summer slowdown, kind of a summer slump, um, there's actually a lot that can be accomplished during these slow periods, especially when it comes to your content marketing strategy. Uh, it's a great time to get around to those things that you're just way too busy for the rest of the year. So what I've done is put together a list of 10 content marketing to-dos that you can put on your schedule to fill up these summer slowdown days, and um, and you will have those in place when business picks back up. Now, if this is not a slow time for you, if you are, for example, the manager of a water park here in Texas, uh, just save this podcast and come back to it when things do slow down for you. Okay, so in no particular order, here are 10 content marketing to-dos that can fill up those summer slowdown days. The first thing you might want to think about is creating some long format content. So you might have had a great idea for an ebook or a white paper or even a webinar, but have just been way too busy to make the time to get it on the schedule and make it a priority. So summertime or your slowdown time is a great time to do that. And um, the best way to approach it is like any other big project. You know, you gather your resources, you gather your team, you put together a project plan and you execute it. And the great thing about working on that right now is that when business starts to ramp up back in September, you will have everything in place and you can rock and roll with your brand new piece of content. Number two on the list, you can do a mid-year review. So this is not only summertime, at least in Northern Hemisphere, but it's also the middle of the year. So it's a good time to take a look at your analytics. And I'm sure you're doing that from month to month or even maybe from week to week. But take a look at the last six months and notice what long-term trends you see developing. Maybe something has you know, started off going gangbusters in January and has just kind of gradually declined um, that you might not have noticed from month to month or something started off very modestly back in January and has gradually increased and is now worthy of more time and attention. So take a look at the last six months of your analytics and see how those different content marketing vehicles are have been working for you over the last six months. The third thing you can look at doing is sharpening your skills. So I know a lot of businesses have in their office a brand new um, video camcorder that is still in the box because they ordered it and have just not taken the time to take it out and play with it and learn how to use it. And slow down days are a great time to do that, whether uh, you want to learn how to use your video camera or um, maybe your, your still camera. You have a fancy SLR that you haven't haven't cracked open yet. And maybe even to um, to find somebody who really knows about this stuff and set up some time with them and say, hey, would you mind you know showing me some tips to use with this video camera? And think about not only hardware, but also software. You might have a program that you downloaded a long time ago and haven't used it because you haven't had the time to go through the tutorials or just play with it to get comfortable with it. So 
These slow days are a great time to sharpen up those skills. And number four is somewhat related to that is to go ahead and take a class or maybe an online course, maybe something that you know about but would like to know more about. And that could be、um, technology or a trend in your industry that you want to know more about.、Um, and there are tons and tons and tons of courses out there, both on the web and also in person.、Um, I know here in Houston we have an organization called Leisure Learn. Learning, and their sole purpose is to provide very、uh, convenient, low-cost courses on anything from, you know, pottery painting to to Microsoft Excel.、Um, and I know a lot of of areas have a similar setup, so this is a really good time to go ahead and sign up for that course and broaden your horizons a little bit. Number five, you might want to look at connecting with some rock stars. And no, I don't mean Bono. I mean、um, if there is someone in a related industry who is really rocking their content marketing. They've got a great e-newsletter. Maybe they have great videos or a great podcast. This is a great time to touch base with them and say, "Hey, would you mind,、um, you know, spending thirty minutes on the phone? I would love to to get your ideas and and see if I can." Benefit from your wisdom.、Um, I find most people are very, very open to things like that. And one thing you want to make sure to do, and I know I don't have to tell you this, but not only say thank you, but but show your thanks in some way.、Um, My favorite mo is I go to Starbucks.com and I send them a twenty dollar gift card, and it's something you can do online, and it goes to them via email, and they just print it out and take it, and they've got their their twenty dollars at Starbucks. So, and then for people here in town, if I meet with them in person, sometimes I'll bring over donuts to their entire team and treat the team to breakfast, and that's a great way to to just say thank you, to express your thanks.、Um, usually, if you Offer to do something in return, people will say, "Oh no, that's not necessary." But I like to go ahead and do things anyway. Just so that's our our mismanners moment for for the podcast. Number six, you can also connect with influencers.、Um, If you are active on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and all these other networks, you've probably、um, there. There are some influencers who have probably come to your attention, and these are people in your industry who a lot of people follow and who、um, who produce some great content. So this is a good time to kind of collect those those influencers and start really following them and start learning from them and how they build up their influence. Number seven is a is a fun activity. Go back to your roots, and what I mean by that is, let's say you've been blogging faithfully for two or three years. Go ahead and go back to those early blog posts and read through them and see.、Uh, for one thing, it's a feel good exercise because you get to see how far you've come, and and you know you cannot do something over two or three years and not improve in it. I've, I'm convinced of that. But you also might get some get some fresh ideas. Say, oh yeah, in that first. Um, that first month of blogging, I had this certain thing that I did, and and I wonder why I don't do that anymore. So it could be a really fun exercise for、um, both for feeling good about the progress you've made and for maybe getting some new ideas going. Number eight, you can catch up on your reading.、Um, if I don't know of any industry that does not require some kind of of keeping up with current trends and and what's going on, so it's a good time to catch up on your reading, whether that's books or that pile of trade publications that's been sitting on the corner of your desk. Yes, I have mine too. And you know, if you have been keeping up with what's being published in your industry, it's a good time to kind of broaden your horizons a little bit because that. Um, that makes us more well-rounded content developers.、Um, I know for myself, one of the book cl- clubs that I belong to, we usually、uh, read business books once a month and then get together to talk about them. And this summer,、uh, we are reading a historical novel. To, uh, for a change of pace, and we're reading a book called *The Coffee Trader*, and it's really interesting because number one, I hardly ever read fiction. I'm all about the practical. You know, give me something I can use. But this is a historical novel that takes place in the 17th century, and it's about a merchant in Amsterdam. Who is、uh, has stumbled up- across、uh, the coffee trade?、And、it's a time when coffee,、uh, time in history, and when coffee was just becoming a commodity. So it's really it's entertaining and informative at the same time, and I'm looking forward to discussing it. So、um, if you are up to date on your industry, go ahead and broaden your horizons and try something new. Number nine, experiment with different formulas. So if you've had your blog going, maybe you've had an e- email. 
um, newsletter going and maybe you've, you've been doing some video, try some things that you haven't attempted before. Maybe you've always thought about doing a podcast and maybe you've even um, downloaded some resources and learned how it's done, but you just haven't haven't dipped your toe in there. And, you know, the great thing about all this digital content is that it's free to create. You know, there's no tape to waste when you're when you just kind of set up your video camera and start start doodling basically and and having some fun with it so you know for example if you've been thinking about a podcast go ahead and set up your your recording software and get in front of a microphone and say okay if I were sitting down to record a podcast what would I talk about and totally you know no pressure just for yourself not going to go anywhere not going to be heard by anybody and just start start playing with different formats and experimenting with them And then finally, number 10, you can plan your content for the back end of 2013. Uh, So however far out you go with your editorial calendar on these, if you're having slow time this summer, you can go ahead and fill out the rest of that calendar so that when you go to create that content, you'll already have your topics in place. And um, believe me, when you are having just a crazy busy time and it's time to sit down and write your blog or do your podcast, it is a godsend to have those topics on already thought out and already in front of you. So planning your content for the rest of the year is definitely a good to do to add to your list. So those are my top 10 um, content marketing to do's for the summer slowdown days if you are having slowdown days right now. And I hope you find that helpful. Uh, if you have any to add, I would love to hear from you. Just hit me up on Facebook or Twitter or shoot me an email, rachel at resonancecontent.com. Now it's time for our content marketing tip of the week. For today's tip, we are talking about RSS feeds. Now, if that term is not familiar to you, RSS feeds are basically uh, a way to keep up with new content that's being published on a favorite source. So blogs have RSS feeds, uh, podcasts do as well, and so do other sites. And um, by the way, if you are curious, RSS stands for Really Simple Syndication. Uh, I have no idea how that name came about, but that's what it is. And so the most popular way way to subscribe to RSS feeds is through a reader. And if you have been using a program called Google Reader, or I should say a Google app called Google Reader, then you are familiar with the RSS format. Now, here's the thing. Google Plus, I mean, excuse me, Google uh, chose to retire the Reader app, and that actually happened on July 1st. And this is where I owe you an apology, because I try to keep you ahead of the curve on these things, but this one kind of snuck up on me from out of nowhere. So uh, as of the time this podcast is published, Google Reader will be no more. So we will need to find new um, sources for our RSS. And my personal choice is a, an app called Feedly. That's F-E-E-D-L-Y. And it's a neat little app. It's very easy to use. It's also um, They also have apps on mobile devices. Uh, you can organize your feeds by topic. It has a uh, read it later function. So if something comes across that you want to make sure to check out later when you have more time, you can tag it for read it later. And it also has a mark as read function. So if you're going through your list and you read something and you're done with it, you can tap on mark as read and it will um, pull it out of the list for you. So it's a pretty handy little little. Um, tool for keeping up with your RSS feeds. And I know as smart, savvy content marketers, you are keeping up with several blogs and other publications to help you stay up to date. So uh, if you need a substitute for Google Reader, I I recommend that you check out Feedly. And there are some other uh, options out there as well. So find one that works for you and keep up with that content that is being published. Okay, campers, that is it for me this week. I hope you've enjoyed this 26th episode of the Content Marketing Podcast for our six-month anniversary show. If you like what you've heard today, please feel free to subscribe on iTunes or through our RSS feed, speaking of RSS. And if you really, really like what you've heard, please leave us a quick review on iTunes. I would so appreciate a few words from you. For more information about content marketing, you are welcome to visit our blog at resonancecontent.com slash blog. Where you'll also find links to our pages on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and other social networks. Google Plus as well. Can't forget, can't forget Google Plus. 
If you'd like to email me a question to cover in an upcoming tip of the week, I would love to hear from you. And you can contact me anytime at rachel at resonancecontent.com. Also, if you'd like for me to come speak about content marketing to your business or your organization, uh, I recommend my newest talk, which is called Content Marketing, Driving Business in a Post-Mad Men World. If you'd like to know more, you can contact me through the website or you can go to contentmarketingspeaker.net. Again, that's .net, not .com, and it's Content Marketing Speaker, all one word. As always, I like to leave you with a quote, and today's is from Stephen King. Now, I have to say, I've never been a fan of Stephen King, not because I don't like his writing, but because uh, I'm not a huge fan of the horror genre. And uh, I'll admit it, I'm a big chicken. I'm a big old scaredy cat. I do not enjoy being scared, so the horror genre is not one that I frequent very often. But Several years ago, Stephen King wrote a great book called On Writing, and it's one of my favorites. It's one that I go back to on a regular basis, and I actually have it on audiobook where Stephen King reads it himself, and it is just, it's really, it's a total favorite of mine. I highly recommend it. Um, The first half of the book is kind of a mini autobiography where Stephen King talks about his journey as a writer and how he got to where he is today. And the second half is just his advice on the practice of writing. Oh, hello, Sophie. Hey, did you scare away the lawnmowers? Good girl. Good girl. Um, Anyway, this quote is from On Writing by Stephen King. He says, amateurs sit and wait for inspiration. The rest of us just get up and go to work. Great words from a great and very successful writer. Again, this is Rachel Parker with Resonance Content Marketing, and we will see you again next week. Take care.